Will we be doing that travel through avatars or biological robots that we direct remotely through neurological pathways? And how precarious is human existence? It's the 31st of March today, and it's... Also... Easter, also Easter Sunday. Yeah, and it's also... Also what? When um, British summertime begins. Welcome to the People's Countryside Environmental Debate Podcast with him... William Manklo, and, and you... Oh, yeah, and me, you're talking over each other again. And me, Stuart the Wild Man Mabbit. Hopefully this podcast will stretch your thinking as we explore opinions are not facts, they're just fleeting moments in time. So, uh, today's topics have been set uh, by Teddy in Norwich and Srinika in Western Province, Sri Lanka. And uh, the questions may or may not have a bearing on the countryside or the environment, but we always try and bring it back to that. We do. And um, we never see the questions before we press record. And uh, we, we, we try and get, uh, have a conversational style, less of a debate. Um, sometimes we have guests in to, if we want to expand the subject a bit more. We try and break down the big issues into bite-sized chunks and we try and come up with actions that address what we discuss. So, what's the question? Uh, first question, William. Uh, the first question is from Teddy in Norwich in England, yep. nice part of the world. And, and Do you know quite... uh, what that stands for, Norwich? Um, let's not say it now. No. Um, I know exactly what you think it's for. Um, uh, Teddy's question, thank you very much. I believe this is Teddy's first question on this podcast. I don't remember him setting one before. No. So, Teddy, thank you very much for your question. Um, Teddy's question. For man to leave Earth and colonise space, it's about we need to lengthen our own lifespan somewhat or become immortal due to the time needed to cover the vast distances. Will we be doing that travel through avatars or biological robots that we direct remotely through neurological pathways. If we do that, will that mean we as the pilots still aren't immortal, but the vessel is? Can anything last forever, though? And I think the biggest issue we have is we we are almost pretty much bound by the speed of light. Okay. Um, and communication is... is, is a, communication even even if we were able to send out as teddy has put here avatars or biological robots there would still be this massive delay between us and and them actually mm. receiving the information and even even mars which is you know astronomically closer than anything else in the universe is still a long way away and mm. the, and there is a lot of issues with communication even with that with, with, with when it comes to time yeah it, uh, somebody once said to me it would take way more um energy to tran to transport there than what we we've actually got access to at this point in time mm. and by the time we get there we wouldn't be alive anyway um you know which digs into sort of what teddy's getting at um now, let me look at this again. Uh, for man to leave Earth and colonise space, it's felt we need to lengthen our own lifespan somewhat or become immortal due to the time needed to cover the vast distances. Well, we're keeping people alive longer now, and so different ailments are coming up. Now, if you put those ailments out in space, well, what's going to happen to them? Because there, there are certain bodily impacts of going into space, staying in space. Yes. Um, so it just may not be feasible. It's interesting what he comes on to. Uh, we will be doing the travel through avatars or biological robots that we direct remotely through neurological pathways. Now, the, the, this directing robots through neurological pathways is, is well advanced science, you know, is, because yes. uh, or already. Mm. Um, but... I mean, the, I would say the biggest barrier still, though, is the the huge distances mm. and, and and actual our current understanding of physics as well. Yeah, you know, we'd have to almost discover a way of being able to communicate more speedily. Yeah, than we currently do, and as as we understand the universe as it is now, I mean, the good example of 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 communication issues is. Um, the Voyager spacecraft, you know, it, it takes an inordinate amount of time yeah. to 
get information back from the Voyager spacecraft. Not just that, but also, say you want to send a, a a command to do something, it will take a certain amount of time for it, the information to get there in the first place to actually yeah. get that command to actually even take mm. on, and then. If then you want to hear, you want to receive back the message to say that the command has been received and acted upon. Yeah. It will take the same amount of time. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what the time lag is, but that that hasn't even really got out mm. of the, the influence of the sun, the gravitational influence of our own star, and mm. that isn't so. It, astronomically speaking, it's extraordinarily close. It's mm. miles. It's millions and millions of miles away, but it's. It, I can't. See, I I I always think that. This whole idea of of um, you know interstellar interstellar travel seems to be purely science fiction. I don't see it happening unless, yeah, I can't I can't really see it happening. Um, well, unless there there was like satellite places along along that route to speed up the navigation, uh, the communication. So you're not com- communicating from Earth to where the object is. You're communicating st- stages. Would that work? I, it would still be the same speed yeah. okay it's not it's not strength it's speed mm. uh, so you know it, yeah it's a bit like when you if you if you were to that's a bit like thinking about how if you had like a, a route plotted out in your gps in your car and you had certain points that you had along the motorway mm. uh, your speed wouldn't change it would just mean that you're it would just give you points along mm. the way the, uh, I, I'd be slightly reluctant to see man leave Earth, even though that's the plan, because it needs we need to save ourselves, because uh, the Earth's not going to last forever. But, you know, we're already pumping out lo- loads of rubbish that's um, circumnavigating the, in space. Um, we leave debris wherever we go, so we do that on a new planet. And I've already heard somebody from NASA say about this new energy get going and being put in to get, get into the moon. A lot of that's driven by actually uh, trying to get, gain ownership to the minerals that are on the moon. You know? uh, so it's always yeah. about extraction every time. Yeah, and, and well, the, the original moon missions were part of... The, um, they were a military uh, expedition, in a way. Yeah. It, it, quite overtly, because it was all part of the Cold War, really, the original mm. moon missions. And the original space missions i mean there was a space race between the soviet union and the united states mm. uh, i think I, when when you think about humans in space you know we often think about you know if you i would say dismiss your idea of space as in humans in space like you see in the likes of star trek mm. for example that is not a reality uh, we are we have evolved on this particular planet to live and survive on this particular planet our body is completely made to be here yeah. particularly with the earth earth's gravity um astronauts particularly those who are in the iss the international space station for any period of time their bone density lessens mm. or weakens mm. uh because the bone density comes from a well it comes from replication i believe and the fact that your body's all continuously the Earth's gravity is continuously exerting itself on your body, yeah. so your body responds to that, yeah. that, that that pressure because that's what our bodies would have been designed for over millions mm. and millions of years. Uh, very interesting angle, Ted. Teddy's got next is um, previously he said in the question, um, uh, what was it? What, do we need to become immortal to cover the fast distances needed? But his next part is if we send up robots to, 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 to do it and we control them remotely, will that mean that the pilots still aren't immortal? Well, of course not. Uh, the, the pilots, would, if it was practical, they're these, these uh, robots, um, the pilot, they're, only being, they're being piloted by us. Ah. So... Uh, they they might go on for longer than us, but because we're we're still on Earth, we the pilot still wouldn't be immortal because we it, it, the, the 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 pilot ship would pass to the next person once the previous one passed away. Yeah. Um. So that's an interesting uh, spin on it. 
And can anything last forever? No, not even the robots. If it was possible to do this, not even the robots would last love forever because uh, you no. know they, you know they, they just wear out. Nothing lasts forever. Yeah, but if if the universe keeps keep, even though it's expanding, or, or you know the known universe, there may be more, might be multiple universes or universe I. Uh, if that the, the theory comes to fruition that even though it's expanding, it absorbs itself and it uses up all the energy within and it, it just goes back to nothing. Well, n- you know, nothing can live without forever within that constraint. Yeah. It goes back to the a previous question. What does nothing feel like? I agree. I don't think it will ever be possible to to really travel the huge distances needed to find uh, a semblance of another Earth. And the, yeah, because even the closest systems, next the next star from the sun is a very long way yeah. away, very long way away. Yeah. Um, somebody was doing um, has done sort of like these scale models of 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 the universe and mm. you, this person had driven in the states um and they were like okay i've started at the sun i'm now going to drive down the road and this is mercury venus and go through all the planets mm. and pluto's quite far away but his drive to the next star i think you know, so like say if, let's say if pluto was or say let's neptune was Maybe about a, tw- a half an hour drive. Mm. His drive to the next star was was about twenty four hours or something like that. Yeah. The, the scale was uh, off yeah. the charts, and that's just the next star in mm. this gal in this in this in this galaxy. Mm. Uh, it just it bog you can't you can't. I don't think we can entirely get our minds around mm. the, how big this how big space is, and. I think we can often think that, well, for example, the moon is really close as we think mm. it is, but the moon is still a long way away. Yeah. Still a long way away. I think it was something like 30 round, 30 round trips around the earth to get to the moon or something mm. ridiculous like that. And that, that is right on our doorstep. And the moon is still quite a hard place to get to, very hard place to get to. And the, Mars is even harder. Mm. So it's like, you know, I think because we look at these things as being... Uh, we 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 we're becoming more technologically advanced as we go on. Uh, uh, technology advances, computers, science, AI, everything is advancing. That we think we, we can extrapolate that out into this into the future, but we could just hit a point where, well, actually, the the limitations of the universe stop mm. us going any further. There's actual a physical barrier mm. stopping us going any further, which. Which is why I believe there's no such thing as, as, as aliens visiting us. I think that's nonsense. That doesn't doesn't seem it seems impossible to me mm. because the the distances are so vast. We think they are not as vast as we think they are because we can move so quickly, especially around on the planet. Now we can get to mm. places within. Uh, well, Mrs. Wildman's gone to India, hasn't she? Yeah. And that took her what was it, twenty four hours? And that seems like a long time, but actually. That yeah. isn't a long time considering the distance she's covered. Mm. Yeah, she had a few. She had a stopover and then she had a coach journey, but it took her pretty much twenty four hours to get where 24 she was. Twenty four hours, and if you yeah, a hundred years ago, yeah, you'd be talking about six months probably to get there, yeah. or at least three or two or three. Any actions? Mm, just to think about um, that. Really, we need to get our own housing order. Okay. And I think being in space, you know, I have to remember that a lot of space exploration has helped us understand the world a lot better than we knew it beforehand. Mm. Um, we've been able to um, monitor the world better from space uh, because you can look down, you get the top down view. My and, ex- also, mm. and also, sorry, and also that, you know, newer te- new uh, technologies have been developed p- just through being in space. Mm. My action is to question and just think about and churn on what is really behind the motivation of going to new worlds, space travel. That's all I'm going to say on that. Just spend some time thinking on that. Your answer may change day on day, but it's worth thinking about. Uh, Second question then is also from a a new listener. 
uh, or a new person who's sent in a listener question. Mm. We had somebody get in touch with us recently. I think it's in one of the later questions saying mm. that they'd quietly been listening. For many years. For many years. And, and never uh, sent in a question. And they have now just sent a question in. It's not this person. It's going to be yeah. a, that's going to be a question in the future. We'll you can never say it's a new listener, can you? You can just a new person sending in a question. A new person who sent in a question. They could have been listening since... The first ever episode. Yeah, who knows? Who is it then? What it's from Srinika Sh- in Western Province, Sri Lanka. Okay. Srinika's question is, never set a question for this podcast before, so that's confirmed that. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, how precarious is human existence? Yeah, uh, well, human, well, on a personal level, it's just, you know, you can be here one minute, gone the next. Um, I think human existence... It, it it will evolve. It, it uh, does won't necessarily look like it does now, even if we don't succeed in reversing climate change and make it a survivable entity. Something of us will ex- still exist. Mm. Um, so I, I think it's very precarious on an individual level, on a societal and community and on a mass level. There, 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 there's more chance of something carrying on. Um, but but even if even if it, it does dis- disappear, the human race, its impact will be here for many many millennia. We have. I was just thinking of we have things that we have we can control as a species. So precariousness can come from you know internal conflict, you know com- wars, mm. that type of thing. You know, there's always that threat or. Mm. Existential, existential threat of us annihilating ourselves with nuclear war, for example. It, I, I don't know how lot. I, I don't know how precarious that is. I mean, it seems to be that the war, the, the world is a lot more active when it comes to a conflict these days. Um, but that's one thing. But there's also um, threats that we we could be wiped out in seconds because well, a big rock has hit us from the mm. from 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 <laughs> from space, yeah. and we have no control over that. Yeah, we don't. Well, where does the word precarious come from? You got any idea? Is that it's, it feels Latin to me? That precarious sounds, yeah, kind of along those lines. Yeah, I mean, it could be Greek actually. I've no, I've, I do not know. No. There might be an action. Have a look, see where precarious comes from. Interesting. What are my, one of my favourite words, and do you know what my real favourite word is? Well, we'll find out in a second. Plinth. Plinth. Yeah, plinth. <laughs> I've always like, I've always liked subtle because mm. there's a subtle B in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's uh, um, well, how precarious is human existence? Was that was that the question? Yeah, yeah. that's the question. Yeah, I, I think there are there are precarious moments. Yes, that can lead on to other things. Precarious existence. Well, there's a lot of us, mm. but it is not beyond the wit of man to imagine none of us left. But there were a lot of dinosaurs. Yeah, as well. So. Mm. Just because there's a lot of something mm. doesn't mean that we won't be. We can't come to it's an end. It's safe. Yeah, we can come to an end very quickly. Like yeah. I said, if it was uh, an outside uh, event, mm. and that's one thing I have heard is that that it would take an outside event for it to be for us to end. But it would also be an inside event. In like I said, you know, we we're growing a lot. We're growing a lot more in closer together, living closer together. So there's going to be more. We had, we had obviously had COVID nineteen. Mm. Uh, I did hear recently that you know there's 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 concerns that another pandemic will happen in another couple of years. Mm. I don't know how true that is. Do not take that as a as a fact. You know, no. just, but it, it, it was definitely talked about purely because we are living so much closer together. There is more of us. Yeah, so this hundred year gap between pandemics. The more there are of us, the the more chance of that that reducing. Yes, I mean our the response to COVID nineteen was pretty rapid, um, though not equal, of course, at mm. all in the world. But it was definitely pretty rapid. Um, I think we were able to understand it better, uh, or understand those challenges better. But they are still there, yeah. I and mean, it could easily be that something more virulent and more lethal turns up. But um, I I don't let that I don't let that. <laughs> keep me awake at night mm. you know there are other things to to try and get, to concern yourself about but is there I, a genuine action here for this one apart from looking up where does precarious come from i would say, yeah that, look up where precarious comes from my action would be 
to understand that human life is itself precarious. You don't know when the last conversation you will have with the person you love will mm. be. Mm. So try to have that in your mind. Have that in your mind whenever you talk to somebody who means something to you to... Um, Yes, to to understand that yeah. you, might, you might not see them again. Yeah, because we don't know how precarious it is somebody very close to me lost somebody in almost in an eye in in a blink of an eye. Mm. It happened as a very random event, and they never saw them again. Yeah. Uh, so anybody could our our own individual human existence can can be can disappear in 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 seconds, and it something that you never even thought about before. Uh, mm. It can just be your in the wrong place at the wrong time, you mm. know? So, yeah, that's my action. Okay, so thanks for being with us again in another episode of the People's Countryside Environmental Debate Podcast. As you can tell, almost every subject that was thrown at us, you can sort of... It, it does have its toe dipped in the environment in some way because it's, that's by sheer nature, that's what it what it all it all about. Yes. You know, we are part of the environment, and uh, the environment is is us. So uh, I I'd, I'd, I'd maybe spin an extra consideration: is how precarious is the environment, whatever that is. <laughs>